Hi there, thanks for joining me tonight for watercolour landscape tutorial for beginners episode one. Tonight we're going to be painting this painting here, which is a very simple painting only using two colours, and I'll take you through this step by step. So stay with me as we go through that. Thanks. Thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to be doing a watercolour landscape tutorial for beginners episode one. So tonight we're going to be doing a wet and wet sky that's always really exciting with cobalt blue and maybe a mix of cobalt blue and light red and then we're going to do some painting of some mountains and then lift out a lake and do some grasses. The, the main brushes we're going to use tonight um, are a, a two inch hake brush, a, a fan brush, and you'll be able to see these in detail later on, perhaps a flat nylon and a round sable. So they're the main brushes we're going to use. And the colors we're going to use tonight is going to be cobalt blue, um, the mix of cobalt blue and light red, and, um, and probably just some light red. We'll, we'll see as we go along what we, what we end up using. But thanks for joining me. Um, if you've got any questions along the way, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks, let's get uh, stuck into the painting. So the paper we're going to be using tonight is the Archer's Watercolour Medium 300 GSM uh, cold pressed 100% uh, cotton acid free paper. So all I've done is got a pad from this and this pad is A3. This is what this pad is but it doesn't really matter and I've just chopped it in half. So we're using half one of these sheets which is about 20 centimetres by 30 centimetres, just so you know the rough dimensions. And all I've done is just taped it down onto this board here um, with 3M Magic Tape. And uh, so let's, let's get started, thanks. One last thing is that uh, today I went to Bunnings, which is our Australian local uh, hardware store, and I bought two spray bottles because I've been running short. I've got two that haven't functioned very well. So I've got two new ones and having just checked them out, they're both working very well. So that's uh, very exciting. We'll use them a tiny bit tonight, but not a lot, but in future paintings, we'll definitely be using a spray bottle. And to be honest, when I'm uh, getting ready to paint, I use the spray bottle to recharge the watercolors that I have in the bowl. So I, I'm forever using a spray bottle. So uh, if you want to join in with the future paintings that we do, then a spray bottle is very handy. All right, let's get started. So at the moment, I'm just mixing up the light red. I'm using my hog's hair bristle brush and I've put some water in. And I'm working pretty hard to just get that usable. I'm just going to get a bit of that and put it into here. So light red is a lot stronger than cobalt blue, so you don't need a lot of light red to make up this mix. So that will do. I've got enough here if I need it. So you could mix all your mixes up in a bowl like this very easily. Squeeze it out of the, the tube and mix it up. And I generally mix mine 
so that they are quite strong because if I'm working wet in wet then that wetness on the page is going to dilute the watercolour even further and of course you could use A much smaller bowl than this, like the one that I had the light red in. So it's like pouring cream, I suppose, the consistency. We'll just see how we go using just these two these two colours tonight. Cobalt blue and a mix of cobalt blue and light red. You can see here I've got some dirty water. I'm going to tip that out and then replace it with some nice fresh water. So to get started you could use a spray bottle to spray on the page but um, most people generally just use a brush so I'm using this hake brush I'm just going to wet the page all over get a bit more water wet the page and actually to begin with you're better off putting on a bit too much rather than too little and what you want to do is look at the sheen off the light and make sure you've got water everywhere all over the page you flick your brush out if you think there's a little bit too much on there and then that's great so then what i'm going to do is load up with this uh hake brush with a little bit of cobalt blue and all i'm going to do is just start bringing in some clouds here we don't have to do anything exact just just make a few marks on the page and then we might get a little bit of this mixture here and bring that in We might even imagine that there's a little bit of rain coming down out of this one. The other thing you can do if you want to is just imagine that these white ones are actual positive clouds. You have to turn the tissue each time. You want to see if you might think about, oh, there's some clouds here that are just going to create some hard edges. So we'll now dry this. We've just made some simple marks on the page with a hate brush. And so when you're drying this, what you want to just uh, notice is uh, whether the paper still has is risen up at all, like it is just here. And I can see it's still wet, 
but that's another thing is it just has it flattened down yet so I need to do a bit more here right so the the next bit oh, rang the bell so the next bit you could choose to um, if you wanted to sketch in the mountain range then you could if you if that made you feel a bit more confident then of course you could do that um, and if you wanted to work out what a mountain range should look like then you could always go online or look at some of the photos that you've taken over the many years when you've been traveling um, but I'm just going to make something up here and I'm going to assume the rain clouds here are more likely to be over higher mountains than the, and the lower ones to be more down around here. So, um, so I, I'm just going to make something up that might look visually, you know, appealing and lovely. So, of course, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that. You could just paint it straight in if you wanted to. So we're going to do this uh, mountain um, uh, in this mix of cobalt blue and light red. So I'll just load up my brush with that, uh, take off a bit of the excess, and then I'm just going to start here. The, the thing you have to realize is after you've just dried your page, it is going to be um, a little bit warm. And the other thing is, is that uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to want to tilt the page a little bit. So I might just rest this on there. I'll just bring it back a little bit. Okay for you guys. Yep. So I'm just resting it. So it's at an angle of, I don't know, uh, 10, 10 or 20 degrees. And I could tilt that up a bit higher if I wanted a little bit more movement to occur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the, the paint here and then I'm going to start watering it down. So I do a graduated wash. So we're going to come in with a loaded round sable, put in a bit of pigment here, uh, and then water it down and then put a little bit, bit of pigment in here. So let's just see how we go doing that. We'll just come in along here. We'll just follow that. Not exactly, of course. Lovely. And then we just load that up with a little bit of water, a little bit more water. Now we might just get a little bit more of this. And we might even. So I just rinsed all the water out then, just to take the... the pigment out. So, we've got a very one-dimensional looking uh, mountain range there. What we could do while it's still wet is we could decide oh, well, obviously the light is coming from here so I might just uh, take a little bit off the front of that bit and even a little bit off the front of that bit and the other thing is I could just get a little bit of light coming this way too just onto there. I might just take that out of it there. And we can, later on, we, if we wanted to put in some, uh, some more detail into the mountains, then we could definitely do that. And the other thing is that if we wanted to um, make it so that it's not quite so a visible line just there, then we could just get the sable, take a fair bit of the water out, and then we can just... Because what we don't want, we just soften that line ever so slightly. What we don't really want is really distinct lines everywhere. We really want our viewers' eyes to be coming in around this area. This is where the light is. We want some contrast here. So if we have a really sharp line just there, you know, it really, what would be great is to just have a little bit of paint there. And then to just take a little bit of that out. So just put a little bit of water onto there and that will just... Mm. 
There we go. Beautiful. Right. Just mopping up a bit at the bottom here. There we go. Beautiful. Right, I think that's, a, that's enough for now. And as you can see, there's some interesting things happening here. The page here is drying more quickly than here. So that's going to create an effect. But the best thing to do in watercolour, when you see something happen and you start to potentially panic, is to just leave it for now. Just, just learn and see what happens. And then be interested in some of that granulation that's occurring and some of this different drying patterns. We can, we can work with that. Lovely. All right. So the next step, so we're going to keep this very, very, very simple. We've just wet the whole page. We've done a bit of a wet in wet sky of cobalt blue and a mix of cobalt blue and light red. Uh, we've used a bit of tissues to create some hard edges which is often what the clouds do look like. Uh, then we've dried it, and then we've put in a mountain range, just, just one. Uh, we've wiped out a few bits with some tissues to create some lights, and we've dried it all. We're keeping this extremely simple. The next step is to see if we can lift out some lights here. Uh, so this is 3M Magic Removable Tape. I use this quite a bit, and if you have a look at this. I think that it just makes sense to put the water line here. Uh, it's where it naturally wants to go, so uh, that's where I'm going to put it. And I'm just going to put it just above that. There we go. So we're just going to lay this down. 3M Magic Removable Tape. All of the things that I use uh, are in the description below, and there are links. It can take you to Amazon if you want to buy them there. If you want to find them somewhere else, that's totally cool. I sometimes in the past have got mine from Officeworks in Australia, but sometimes they haven't had this removable tape. That's been hard to find. It's not always available at Officeworks. The, the 3M Magic tape is, but the removable tape isn't always. So um, links will be in the, in the description. So the next steps so I've put down the removable tape. I've got my flat nylon. I've wet it uh, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of the water out so there's not too much and then what I'm going to do is just come along here and just lift out the water all the way along here this time and then I'm going to get a little bit more water because I'm running out and I just might run it across there like that and then I'm going to get a tissue I'm going to lift it out, get a new tissue lift it out, get a new tissue or turn it over lift it out, lift it out so every time you want to keep turning so you don't so you make it nice and clean there we go, we're all done we can just lift this off now this way So what you want to do now is, is that's a little bit damp now, we'll just we'll just dry that, okay? Alright, so we're just going to put a little bit of uh, foreground in here now, okay? Uh, just a little bit of detail, we're going to keep this very simple again. So uh, this is the last phase, we're not going to do too many things, and then what I might just show you, uh, and not that you have to, is at the end we'll just, I'll show you how to lift out some lights a little bit for the mountain because the light source is here coming coming this way. So let's just, we're just going to keep the colours very simple okay, so we're, we're sticking to the uh, mixture of cobalt blue and light red and we're just going to, we've still got it at an angle and we're just going to come in here, again it doesn't have to be exact really but uh, we're just going to come in here and just have a little bit of foreground here. We'll just grab this uh, nice fan brush. We'll load that up with a little bit more pigment so it's nice and strong. And we'll just do some nice grasses here. And the other thing I might do is I might just get my, 
my knife and I'm just going to scratch out some bits there. I'm going to get the spray bottle and just tilt that up a little bit more and just spray that. Just get a bit more pigment on there. Nice. Just get a little bit more pigment. Excellent. And we're just keeping this extremely simple. We're not using lots and lots of colours. Mop up a bit. So you can use a knife to just either lift out lights or drag in some darks if you want to just load up the knife with some darks then it's sometimes nice to have that sort of effect. So I suppose one last thing is if you wanted to really make it so that this bright light here was hitting the water, you could get a, a ruler and generally I use a metal ruler and you could just bring it down until it just touches the water and then use a razor blade like this. Uh, to just scrape back and forth. So you've got to decide where you want that light source to be and then just get used to and it will just take it back to the it will just take it back to the white of the paper and again if you wanted to take that out into here And you could do that, but you just don't want to take that too far. There we go, that'll do. So this is the end result of a very simple exercise of wetting the whole page doing a wet and wet sky with just some marks. It doesn't really matter what you do. Just put some on the page. Uh, and then we got a tissue and brought out some hard edges, took out some hard edges, remembering to turn the tissue as we went and we dried it all. Then we brought in the mountain and we graduated that. So we had that at an angle and graduated that down all the way down to the bottom of the page. Uh, and then we lifted out some lights with tissues again and then we dried that and then we lifted out the light of the, the lake or the water or the river or the ocean and then dried that and then we brought in some foreground, added a bit of grasses, dried that and then we just scraped back with a razor blade and a few other lights. If we wanted to put in some distant mountains we could do that. If we wanted to, oh, I said I'd show you how to lift out some lights in the mountain so you could use you could use a flat nylon or you could use a round sable a flat nylon is often a good one because a lot of formations on the mountains are not curved they're straight so the thing you want to do is to just start to think about well what shape might this mountain be here uh, And 
just try and imagine what that's rain coming now. I don't know if you can hear that, but and just see if you can imagine that and and then just wipe them out. And that's probably gone a little bit too far, but uh, So if I've gone too far, like I, I think I have just there, I've lifted out a bit too much, what I would do is dry it and then just add a little bit more pigment. If you start trying to add pigment while it's all damp, it'll turn into a mess, so we're going to dry it. So whenever you're doing some layering like this, you really want to not do too much, treat it very softly. And once you've finished touching it, don't touch it too many times because you'll start lifting, disturbing the layers underneath. So each time you put down a layer, even though it's a light layer of watercolor, you can dry it again. Anyway, you could keep working on that to make it both darker and lighter. So you could add some more darks, add some more lights. You could just keep Right, so that's the end of that exercise. Um, obviously if I was going to sign this painting, then I would end up signing it most likely just here. Just because I don't want to sign out there and make the signature the subject. And that's the end. Remember when you're taking it off to peel the tape away from the paper and hang on to the paper as you peel it away. Same again, peel it away. And then peel it away. And also probably what 
you know, would have been good is it's always good to just leave it attached while it all dries because it will dry flatter. But I just wanted to show you what this looks like uh, when it's finished. So thanks for joining me tonight in watercolour landscape tutorial for beginners episode one tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you would really like me to do something in particular for you. So I'm happy to paint anything that I'm able to paint and, and help anyone out there to learn how to paint in watercolour because I think that everyone can. So if you like tonight then please press like and if you would like to know when I post any future videos which I'm going to be doing every week then please uh, press the subscribe button and press the bell button so you don't miss anything. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode. Good night.